Biology students, today we're going to be looking at relationships and symbiosis. This is your theme one, still in topic one ecology, page three notes. Let's begin. So our first outline heading is going to be where and how the different organisms live. And we're going to have a, about two different vocab words under this where we're going to want to put that underline for the heading. So our first vocab words of the day are niche, which some people like to say niche or niche, but make sure you're highlighting it because it's a new term. What it means is the role a species plays in a community. This could be what its job is within the community. So beavers, we often think of them as builders within the community. Habitat though, is not the job, it's just where the organism lives its life out. So the beaver lives its life out near the water, but its job is to build dams. Okay, make sure you highlight both terms and know the difference. Let's keep going. Pause if you need to continue to write. We're going to have five different types of heterotrophs. Okay, the first type is an herbivore. An herbivore is something that only eats plants. We know that they are also called primary consumers. And a good example is a deer. Other types of mammals like koalas can be herbivores. Then we know that there are carnivores. Notice the prefix in, carni oops, in carnivores is carne, meaning meat, meaning they kill and eat other animals and therefore they eat meat. Carnivores are always gonna be secondary consumers or tertiary consumers. They are never the first level consumer like herbivores. Herbivores are the first level because they eat plant matter. And then comes omnivore, that's us. And we could be secondary consumers or tertiary consumers. And omnivore means both. They eat both plants and animals. A lot of times when scientists are trying to figure out which thing an organism is, they will go out in the wild and watch. Other times they can look at the skulls and see, do they have sharp canines like the vampire teeth? That's for tearing meat. Or do they have very kind of flat molars in the back. That's more for herbivores. We have both canines and flat molars, so we are omnivores. Last but not least is this category that we would put vultures in. What do you think the word is? Scavenger. They do not kill the food, but they do eat meat, right? So it's slightly different than carnivore. They don't go out and kill it. Now a lot of students say, but humans, we don't go out and kill everything. A lot of times we go to the grocery store. Well, we have the ability to, and we used to before we had modern society, but things like raccoons and vultures and crows, they would never ever kill something. They like to find things that are already dead. Notice that all these things are heterotrophs. Heterotroph has a synonym. It was consumer. Notice that the word consumer is used over and over again here. What's the one thing you're not seeing here that's the opposite of heterotroph? Autotroph, right, or producer. Well, that's because those are plants and they do not fit into this category at all since we're only talking about things that eat other things, heterotrophs or consumers. Okay, let's go on to the next part. Now, we have a little bit more under the same heading, Roman numeral number two. Remember it said five heterotrophs, and the last type of heterotroph is a decomposer. This thing is gonna break down dead organisms and matter, and they're gonna recycle nutrients. There are three major groups that do this process. They are fungi, right, mushrooms and such, bacteria, these little single cell guys, and invertebrates like worms and snails. A lot of students remember these three groups by the acronym FBI, fungi, bacteria, invertebrates, and that way they remember things. Without these creatures, all the nutrients would be trapped in the dead organisms and would never get cycled back into the ecosystem. So we really rely on these guys a ton for nutrients to go back into the food chain or web so check your understanding what was a worm decomposer what about this one the human being yeah you were an omnivore next raccoon i didn't use raccoon as an example but i said it out loud it was a scavenger right they don't go out and kill food they find dead things 
Then we have deer. What are they eating? They're eating plants, so they're an herbivore. And then we have lion, roar, right? That's our carnivore. Did you need to write this all out? Well, no. If you already had examples for Roman numeral number two, all five new vocab words, this was just extra practice. Okay, we have one last thing we're gonna do. Remember the notes were called relationships and symbiosis. Let's learn what symbiosis means for Roman numeral number three. Define symbiosis and then describe the four different types under this big new word. Symbiosis means close permanent relationships between, this is a abbreviation for between, organisms of different species. I'm abbreviating so that this whole page doesn't look so cluttered and you're welcome to write the words out or abbreviate in your notes. Let's break down the word that's very new and very weird into parts. The prefix sim means together and bio meant life. So this means life together. And here's a really good example. This butterfly, we see them all the time and what are they always living together with? Plants and especially flowers, right? They're relying on each other. And all the different types of symbiosis living together are gonna be these relationships of two different organisms relying on each other or living together. And how many different types are we about to learn underneath Roman numeral number three heading? We're gonna have four. So we're gonna have four more vocab words before we finish today. Let's get going. Here's our first one. Parasitism, the first type of symbiosis. They're going to, one organism will benefit and another one's gonna be harmed. We're gonna look at an example in class or I might assign it for homework to watch depending on how far we get into the day. And it's gonna be a wasp attacking a caterpillar. Okay, but a better example that's not written here would be a mosquito. What's the mosquito getting out of the relationship of it being on this human's arm? It's getting food, blood, right? And the human, is it liking it? No. So I love drawing smiley faces for these relationships because it shows who's benefiting and who's not. Okay, so parasitism, one thing benefits and the other creature is not. Let's go over the next example. Commensalism, try saying that one out, commensalism. Now, instead of like parasite, one thing is gonna benefit still, but now the other creature is unaffected. Our really good example pictured here to the right are barnacles, these white things living on the whale. Now the whale is so giant, it barely notices these weird crusty creatures growing on it. But the barnacles, they love being on the whale. They're getting so much out of it versus the whale who could care less. The barnacles, as they're moving through the water, as the whale's swimming, the barnacles are getting food as they move through the water. So the barnacles are benefiting from getting food. The whale doesn't care. He could care less. So that's commensalism, right? Slightly different. Notice the smiley faces. Our third example is mutualism, which has what word kind of hiding in it? The word mutual, which means both. If, mu if I'm having a mutual agreement between you and I, we are both agreeing. And that's what's happening here. Both organisms are benefiting. And that gets back to our pollinator, the butterfly and the flower. Both organisms are getting something out of it. The pollinator is getting food, the nectar and pollen, and the plant is getting pollinated. It's getting to reproduce better because of the help from the butterfly. Both creatures are benefiting. Last but not least, a predator-prey relationship. Here we have a fox chasing a bunny. Now one organism is going to kill the other and the other one is food. If we were to add smiley faces, one would have a smiley face regular and the other one would be not so happy and even worse than the parasitism one because you live after a parasite like a mosquito bites you you don't like it but here the bunny's going to be dead so we'd have to like have x's for the eyes for the smiley face okay we will practice this by giving more examples and you trying to identify them next class um if you have any questions jot them down and that way you can ask me wonderful job guys See you next time.